Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how I created my cube shattering, the updated version, not the previous version, but the newer one. So first you're going to want to open Cinema 4D. I'm going to be using Cinema 4D R13. You can use other versions. Not sure how far back you can use them, but R12 probably, and R11 I'm guessing. So first you're going to make a floor. You're going to make a cube. You're going to add the collider body tag to the floor, and you're going to add a... Oh, never mind. You're not going to need the rigid body on it, because... Okay, so you're going to want to... You need to plug in the Rossi, or the Rousey, or however you say it. I'm just going to make it around 12 pieces, because I don't want it to take too long to render, since this is just a tutorial. The more pieces you make it into, the longer it's going to take to render. Oh, I guess I did 7 pieces. Forgot. Um, well, yeah, there you can see it. it's already shattered, but the pieces kind of slide on the floor a bit too much. I'm going to show you a bit more on how to do this. So here I'm just going to add the light to make it look a bit better when you render it. Position it over there so the shadow's going to be on the left. Add another light so that one on the left is not too dark. I'm going to bring that down to about 10% intensity. And then I'm going to add a soft maps shadow so that it's not completely traced, it looks a bit more natural. Just positioning the camera so it looks a bit better. Here I'm going to be messing around with the friction so that when it falls down it's not going to be <clears throat> sliding all over the floor continuously like the floor is made of ice. As you can see I'm going way too high. Um, well, I'm going to skip ahead a bit because this takes me a little while. Okay, so here I just added a few more frames so that I can see a bit more of how far the cube pieces go once it hits the ground. And now I'm messing around with the floor's friction so that the pieces can slide off each other but I don't want it to slide across the whole floor you guys can tweak a bit more um, I think it's pretty good I'm just going to be messing around with the options here so I usually go with uh, I usually go 720p with these kind of animations but with my intros I go 1080p because I'm not really sure what res the people I make the intros for use. Uh, I usually just go all frames. I make my save file. I usually render in quick time. And then I take it to After Effects and whatnot. Edit it and take it to PowerDirector 10 and edit it a bit more. <coughs> so yeah, I'm just going to skip ahead to where I finally save the file. Um, here I'm just going to edit around with the render quality so you can go to anti-aliasing change geometry to best and change it to gauss or animation or gauss or however you say it I'm going to add ambient occlusion effect and global illumination I'm going to change GI mode to QMC with an animation like this it doesn't really make too big of a difference but I normally just do it Especially with an animation like this, this doesn't really take too long to render, so it doesn't really matter if it's in there or not. Here I was just showing you the difference between with it and without it when I render. Uh, here, this is the material for inside the cube, because once you use the Throssy plugin, it makes a inside material and outside material. I like making the insides really white. Because with animations like this, I just go with a simple look, so yeah. I usually take the specular off because I don't really like the reflections and whatnot in animations like this. I just try to get a fast render and make the physics and whatnot really good. Okay, so now I'm just going to mess around with the, a bit more with the materials. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is just a tutorial. I accidentally placed it on that part. So yeah, I was just clicking Ctrl Z to take it off. This is the outside part. 
of the cube. Um, don't want it to be too black, or else it just looks weird. Uh, here I'm doing the material for the floor. I usually take the specular off, no luminance. There you go. Boom. Now you can see the inside, floor, shadows. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> Taking down the intensity so it's not as bright. Yep, so that looks alright. Um, so yeah, if you like a tutorial, just tell me. Uh, here I'm just adding a camera, so that when I render, it's going to render with this thing. And that I don't have to worry about moving my view around, because I know the camera's placed over there. So I can go back here whenever I want. There I was just checking the height, see how high it was. Now I'm just checking to see if I can see the shadow in the scene before it even starts. And as you can see here, um, the crack is already in the cube before it even hits the ground. So I'm going to be showing you how to fix that. So what you're going to want to do is go to your cube, go to your dynamics body thing, the tab, dynamics body tab, go to collision, you see the self collision, how it's ticked off, that means the pieces are going to be hitting themselves. Here what I'm going to be doing is a key framing. So, so what you do here is, on the first frame, you see that little dot before self collisions you're going to want to control click it while the checkbox is unticked so here untick and then control click that and then you're going to play it and you're going to wait you're going to hear one sec you're going to see what i do <clears throat> i'm going to see at what frame the cube's at before it hits the ground so i wanted to get as close as the floor without it hitting before i turn self collisions back on so here is frame 36, as you can see frame 37 it hits the floor. So I'm going to turn it back on on frame 36. I'm just going to make sure that's frame 36 right here. I went a bit too fast there. So yeah, frame 36 is as close as it gets to the floor without actually touching the floor. So that you're going to go back to self collision, take it, control click once the circle turns yellow. And then you're going to play and as you can see, as it once it hits the floor it breaks apart. Here I'm going to show you that before it hits the floor, it's not going to be cracked. Just one sec. Here. You can see that it's not cracked. It may look cracked before you render it, but when you render it, it's not. And as you can see, still, it's a bit before. Frame 35, still not cracked. Frame 36, you can see the tiny crack in it now, because that's when I turn self collisions back on. Even though it hasn't hit the ground yet, but most people, you're not going to be able to see it with your eye when you're just fully rendered and you're playing it full speed. Because it renders in about 30 frames per second, and that's one frame. So, yeah, your eye can't see that fast. So it's going to be unnoticeable to anybody. And yeah, here it is. This is it. It's going to render it out. So you can see it frame by frame. Should have gone there we go. As you can see frame by frame, still not cracked. And just wait till it hits frame 36, you're gonna see it get to tiny crack in it. Right there, and then boom. Breaks. I should have taken the frames down from 150 because it doesn't take that long to render. And here I'm gonna show you how to speed it up if you're in Windows. You just click Control Alt Delete. And you can click Start Task Man Manager. I have it on my Start Bar or Task Bar or whatever the hell it's called. So yeah, you just click that. You go to Processes tab. Then you right-click Cinema 4D, Priorities, and you set it to High Priority. It'll slow everything else down on your computer, but it'll make Cinema 4D render out the animation faster. So if you're not going to be using your computer while it rendered out, which I suggest you don't use your computer while it's rendering out animations, um, yeah, you just set it to high priority, let it go. It might heat up faster though. 
So like me, I have extra fans and I have it completely open in the open so air can circulate in and out in the cold room. So it doesn't overheat ever. I'm just gonna go through each frame slowly. Check it out. Uh, make sure you check out my other videos. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that whatnot. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below if you'd like me to make more tutorials. I will be making a tutorial for my glass ball shattering video because I've learned a ton of requests for it. Yeah, so just keep watching. Hope you like it. Thanks. Bye.